So what we did last time, we have uh, we did this. <coughs> What's the Laplace transform of one? Anybody remember? One over s. Uh, t to the power n will be one over s minus a. Uh, oh, yeah, no, no, that is e to the power. Wrong thing, wrong. Uh, this one is going to be n factorial over s to the power n plus one e to the power a t one over s minus a t n e to the power a t will be n factorial s minus a to the power n plus one and then we have sine KT. What sign KT? Anybody remember? A over quantity S squared minus K plus K squared, excuse me. S squared plus K squared. Oh, sign KT. S, S over. So we did all this last time. <laughs> We also talked about, last time we also talked about the uh, class transform of alpha fx fp plus beta dt is going to be alpha transform. The part transform is linear, it has linear property. So today, the inverse Laplace transform is going the other direction. So what do you think is the inverse Laplace transform of one over S? What do you think is the answer? We start with one over s, going backwards. What's the answer? The Laplace transform of one is one over s. So the inverse transform of one over s should be one. So be bottom. So that's that's the definition of inverse transform. It's just going backwards. This one will be uh, t to the power n. Then. Okay. Uh, you got the idea, I think. It's just going backwards in the other direction. And this guy is also linear. Alpha. Uh, you understand what this is saying, hopefully. Okay, we do an example, then we'll be pretty clear.
Uh, because of linearity, we can just do them separately one at a time. And then we can pull the constant out. So the inverse transform of this guy will be, will be what? What's the inverse transform of this part? Two. two over here will be two <coughs> plus three times e, e to, to the, the five. five. E to the power five t. Okay. Very good. We'll do some more example, okay? Uh, what do you think it is? Look at this guy. Look at that. So we want to think about this as inverse transform of uh, one over s to the power of five. So we would do s to the power of five <coughs> four factorial. One over four factorial. You guys know what is going on? I put the four factorial there so they look like this. So it will be one over four factorial. T to the power, T to the power what? Four or five? Four. Oh. One over. Inverse transform of S squared plus seven. seven. Plus seven. <laughs> S squared plus square root seven square. We want to lock it, make it look like this. Square root of seven. One over square root seven. One over square root seven. Sine. Yeah, are you guys following? Let me know if you follow or not. I'm going to just keep going. If I go too fast, you need to let me know. Minus. 2s plus 6. So we are going to look at this as two parts. Two parts here. This is one part. This is the other part. So the bread one, the bread one is going to give me a uh, the black one is going to give me a what? A cosine. The other one, the blue one, is going to give me a sine. So the black one is minus two cosine. How many t? Cosine. How many t? Two. Two t. The other one here, you have a six there, which is keep the six. <coughs> but here, I need to have a K 
So I divide by two. And then I, uh, I will have sine. Uh, do you guys follow? <laughs> Uh, did I mess up? Uh, I have a six here. I have a two. I think it's correct. Is it correct? Yeah, this is correct. Are we okay? Yes, no? Did I... Are you guys able to follow this? No? Yes? Yeah, I think we're all right. Okay. This next one is crazy. <laughs> It's a mess, <laughs> but we want to, <coughs> what we want to do is to separate this guy out into something like this. And if we can do that successfully, once we do that successfully, we are going to have our answer pretty easy. But each of this is going to be an exponential because it has this term, S minus A. You're get, going to get some exponential function. But how do we determine A, B, and C? Do you guys remember that? Do you remember the procedure for doing partial fraction? You need a little bit of a review. Okay, I will do this then. So I will do it somewhere here, I guess. The goal is to find A, B, and C, all of them. So you multiply throughout by S minus one, S minus two, S plus four. Then I will end up with this. How do I determine A, B, and C? Let S equal two, negative four, and one. Set S equal to negative four, S equal to one, two. S equal to two. two. Set S equal to negative four, <coughs> negative four will get rid of both the first one and second one. Okay, this will be zero now. Okay, negative four put it in there. I have 16 minus 24 plus nine is equal to C times minus five times minus six. 
8 plus 9 is 17. C is 17 divided by 30. Is that correct? Uh, <coughs> no, this is not 17. <coughs> this is minus 8 plus 9 is 1. 1 over 30. Okay. Do you guys follow? Yes. Set S equal to 1. We'll kill this guy and that guy. Set it equal to 1. 1 plus 6 plus 9 is equal to 8 times negative 1 times 5. So A will be negative 16 over 5. Is that correct? Yeah. And then set x equal to 2. We'll kill this guy and the one at the end. 2 squared plus 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 12 plus 9 is equal to b times 1 times 5. Okay. Is it all right, guys? So I have this A, B, and C here. This is a partial fraction in calculus two. A will be minus sixteen over five. B is twenty-five over six, and C is. 1 over 30. So what will be my answer to this? Minus 16 over 5, s minus 1, s minus 1 become e to the power, e to the power what? e to the power 1t. e to the power 2t, e to the power minus 4t. Is it OK? You guys have any question? A lot of calculus two type stuff. Oh, we're, we're still catching up. Uh, you froze for a second, I think. Okay, I, I, no problem. So Antonio, let me know when you are ready, okay? No, I, I'm good, I, I got everything down. You got everything? Mm -hmm. Other people okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh. Last time we did this, last time we did this. Uh, this is uh, derivative 
of transform. Okay, so this is a picture for derivative of transform. Now we're going to do another picture. So this side is differentiating the transform. Okay, and then do a minus of that. It's the same as multiplication by T in the time domain. Here, what we're interested is <coughs> the transform of the derivative. You take the derivative in the time domain and see what happened in the transform domain. Okay, transform of derivative. Okay, so here is you <coughs> transform first and then take the derivative and then you see what is the corresponding effect on the time domain. And here, you do the time though, in the, take the derivative here, okay? And see what is the corresponding effect on the right-hand side. Okay, so we're gonna fix this out, okay? So this guy here, we are interested in the transform of the derivative. The transform of the derivative. That's what we're interested in. Okay. Um, by the definition of Laplace transform, this will be this. Okay. This is just the definition of Laplace transform. When there's no prime here, there's no prime here. When there's a prime here, we have a prime. Okay. In order to do this, we use integration by part. Okay. We will set, uh, this is an E, sorry. We will set U is equal to this. And dv is f prime t dt. You guys understand my plan? Doing integration by part. Okay. Hey, sorry, professor. Um, in that first figure, uh, beneath the f of t, what is that? I don't know if it's just pixelated for me. What is the? What is that? It's the t multiplying. Oh, okay. Thank so, you. <coughs> it's t times f of t. Taking the derivative on the right hand side is essentially the same as multiply by t on the left hand side, with the exception of the negative. This negative you can put it either way. Either side. Okay. And we did that last time. Yeah, no problem. We did that last time. Now we are going to do this other side. And what do we need to put here? Okay. Here we're taking the derivative on the left hand side and see what happened to the right hand side. And this left hand side is just a definition of the Laplace transform. Okay. And then I'm going to use integration by part. Integration by part, this du will be what's du? With respect to t, okay minus s equal to minus s t. Et. What will be v? What will be v here? I'm sorry, I'm running out of space. What will be v? If d v is f prime t d t, v will be f of t. It's okay? Are we still okay? Then we will just do this 
equal to e to the power minus s t is multiplied by this f of t infinity and zero subtract the integral of this integral minus s let's look at this here you put the infinity here you put the infinity for t as long as s is positive so this part will go away and then when you put the zero in here when you put the zero in here you have this e to the zero is one so you have f of zero so you have negative f of zero plus plus the integral this integral this integral you can take the s out you can take the s out once you take the s out you will have this and that whole thing is just the laplace transform of <coughs> the original function okay so now we got this S times f of s minus f of zero. Uh, don't worry about it if you don't follow all the details here. You just need to know the result, essentially. Okay. So we have these two pictures. One is that over here on the left hand side you multiply by t correspond to then on the right hand side here you take the derivative except there's a difference of a negative sign over here on the left hand side you take the derivative on the right hand side you multiply by s except there's an adjustment of f of zero okay so there are some symmetry there multiply differentiate differentiate multiply is it okay now we are we are now getting to a point we're now getting to a point where you can use we can use laplace transform to solve differential equations okay this is what we're going to do oh professor yes um, yeah. can you just pause for a bit because it's like the quality is uh, really pixelated. Um, it's, uh, so I'm maybe not sure uh, if it's focusing or something. Uh, is it happening to everybody? Yeah, your uh, bandwidth yeah. is low, so it's. So kind of uh, what I am going to do, I'm going to log out. I'm going to get out and get back in. Okay, I, this has happened before, and it well, just stay on. You guys stay on. Okay, I'm right. going to end the meeting. And come back in.
can see if that clears it up. No, not really. Not really. Yeah, so, um, oh, restart oh, the computer. Or? It keeps on coming in and out of focus. Right now, it's okay, relatively okay. in focus. There we just go. Isolated. Okay, okay. It's good now. It's good. Is it good? It's good for it's good for now. It might not be good later, but it is now. It's so, good. so it's better it's something good okay? No, it's good. Huh? What do you do, kid? Okay? Oh, so he, my my son-in-law enable enable XD on the camera. Oh, okay. That's very nice. Thank you. Okay. You more in focus. Thank. Okay. So so it's a lot better. Way yeah, better. it is. Yeah, that's better. So is is that setting yeah. permanent now? Or do I? Yeah, it's, it's set. It's set now. Yeah. You and and it will see on my computer. Not this is not a Zoom. On the Zoom setting. On the Zoom setting. Yeah. On the video. Uh, on the Zoom setting. Okay. I see. All right. So okay. Good. I mean, I can figure this thing out. Okay. Uh, okay. Where are we? Maybe you should keep it like this from now on. Yeah, I'm going to keep it like this. I, I don't know whether I have to do that. Do I have to do it every single time? It's, it's, safe it's already safe. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. OK, so OK, I said that I'm going to do an example on solving a differential equation. OK. Okay, I mean, there are other methods to solve this problem. <coughs> uh, I think this is a <coughs> linear Pastor, can, can you just read us the example? Because it's bad again. It's bad again? Yeah. It, yeah, the HD isn't going to help because mm, most likely the problem is that you're on Wi Fi. And it's so my Wi Fi. Wi -Fi. It, it, yeah. yeah, it says that your network bandwidth is low. So now it's probably going to make it worse because. You're using yeah. a, more using HD, so you should probably just turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. good for a while and then it turns not good. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just go a little bit slower, it'll be okay without the HD. Yeah. I'm sure have, to have like a way to like uh, yeah, write it on like paper and then scan it and then show it on your screen or something like that, maybe. Maybe that would be a little bit clearer. But we I have think as long as you go slower, it, 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 it'll be fine. Perhaps, yeah. So we change it back. Yeah. Looks it's, good. It, it's, yeah, it's a lot better now. OK. OK. I mean, let, let me know if it doesn't. I mean, this is the first time. Oh, it looks to, good now. We, first time you run into a major issue. I mean, if if you run into a major issue again, I can always, I can always reset my we sent my uh, uh, internet connection, but it's gonna take a while for it to put up. Okay. You guys can see now. Can you guys see now? Yes, it's very visible. Okay. All right, so what do we do here? So we essentially using this, okay? We essentially using that picture there. Okay, so this guy, okay, I'm gonna erase this. It's essentially that picture. Uh, it's an IVP, so I have the initial condition, which I did not say, Y0 equal to six. Okay. So 
you start out with this function, yt is the solution. Okay. So this is capital Y. It's the transform, it's the Laplace transform of my solution. So here <coughs> will be Y prime T, the Laplace transform of that is going to be S Y S minus Y zero. Is it okay? So basically what I do, it's like take Laplace transform on both sides. Okay, Laplace transform of y prime is going to be s y s minus y zero plus three times the Laplace transform of y will be y s will be equal to thirteen times the Laplace transform of this guy. Uh, will be what? Laplace transform of this one will be two over s squared plus four. Is that right? Is that correct? Do you guys follow this? Uh, this one is six. That one is six. Isn't that also supposed to be plus three y s uh, next to the right of the of y zero? This is plus y s. Okay. Oh, y s three y s. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mess up. So this will be s plus three y s. Equal to twenty six s squared plus four plus six. Okay. Are you guys still with me? Y s will be twenty six s plus three s squared plus four. Plus six over s plus six. Uh, do you guys still follow up to here? Yes. Okay. Now, in order to then, I need to take the inverse transform of this. Okay. So my answer, my answer is the inverse transform of this. But this guy is not nice. <clears throat> this guy is not separated. We need to do a partial fraction on that. Okay. So I am going to do a partial fraction on that. Okay. Now you guys, you guys understand the plan? 26 over s plus 3, s squared plus 4, is a over s plus 3 plus. Now this s squared plus 4 has no factor. Okay, you cannot factor. So what do I put up there? Do you guys know? 
Also, I put up here. Does anybody remember your calculus too? B squared plus C, I want to say. B S plus C. B S plus C. Yeah. It's okay. Now we need to solve for A, B, and C. Multiply by round by S plus three, S squared plus four. Okay. And then I end up with I end up with 26 equal to A times S squared plus 4 plus BS plus C S plus 3. How do I get my ABC? You're going to set some numbers. S equal to minus 3. It's very nice because you kill both of these guys. So 26 is equal to A times 13. So A is equal to 2. It's okay. A is equal to 2. Now, in order to do B and C, you can't really kill it that easily here. Yeah, it's kind of a little bit more complicated now. Um, so you just set, randomly set some numbers convenient numbers. You pick some nice numbers to put. What should I put? S equal to zero. S equal to zero. 26 S equal, to one. equal to equal to four times A, right? S equal to zero would be four times A. Four times A is equal to eight plus C times three. So C will be equal to six. 26 minus eight is 18 divided by three, six. And then I set S equal to one, just for convenience. 26, one will be five, five, eight is 10 plus B plus C. C is three times S is equal to one. So you have four, four equal to B plus three. So B is equal to one. Is it okay? Is, it, is B equal to one? Did I do it right? I have a different answer earlier. I have B equal to negative two, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I have I, I used to have B equal to negative two. I did something wrong. S equal to one. I put one here, 26. I put one here. One. Five times two is ten. S equal to one. B plus C. Oh C is six. I don't know why I put three. C yeah, C is six. This is six. Sorry. Yeah, C is six. I looked at that three there. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm nearly done now. This will be our inverse of A is equal to uh, B. So this guy is going to be A, A is S, A is two, two over S plus three, plus B is one, minus B is, B is minus two, minus two S plus six, divided by S squared plus four, plus six over S plus three, a over S plus 3 plus 
plus or minus two s plus six s squared plus four. Uh, I think it's good. Uh, this will give then I take the inverse transform. <coughs> I know that this guy will give me an exponential function. This guy is going to give me sine and cosine. Can you guys see that? So by looking at the denominator, okay, you can tell what is going to be the function that's coming up. Okay. So it will be this is eight times e to the power how many t? Anybody can figure it out? This is supposed to be s minus a, right? So a will be negative three. Are you guys with me? Yeah, I'm sure we get it. Uh, the only issue is that your internet is still kind of bad. Oh, so we wow. can't really see the board too well. That's really bad. Uh, huh. Let me see whether anybody else is using it. Maybe I, I don't know whether I can reset my internet. <coughs> I, I may want to reset the internet. Is it really bad if I reset my internet? Someone else in your home might be using it. I usually would causes it to be like slow. But they're not really using it for a lot of stuff though. Now it's really clear. <laughs> yeah, it just got better. So what this is what we're gonna do that. We are gonna just just wait then, okay? Whenever you cannot see, just let me know. All right. How about that? Sounds good. What if I reset it? I just affect so many people in my home. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <that's> fine. <laughs> because we have five people here now. Okay. We 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 don't I don't want to reset it until and then also once I re, if I reset it, it take a long time for it to reboot. Is it okay? Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah, that's good. No, it's it's okay, guys. It's okay. I'm not asking you guys. Okay, it's okay. Sorry. He's gonna go yell at everybody. <laughs> I want to. <laughs> Down the law, Tong. <laughs> Tell him, Tell him oh, Papa Go get him. Go get him. Send him can't, to he can't, That's like he he can't look us in the eye and yell at us, so he has to go. So is it okay? It's okay now. So I think what yeah. we should do is that you guys just let me know. We we'll just have to wait. Once yeah, that's okay. It's not, good. The of, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> Minus two. <laughs> And this this guy this guy there's a cosine there. Is it correct? Did you do this before? This one plus we probably do this example study. <coughs> plus what? The six. The six I have to split into a three and two. I think this is correct. Is it okay? As you can see, for this example, uh, we don't have, I mean, it's good that we can do it using part, using a Laplace transform, but sometimes the calculation is long because of the partial fraction. But the technique of Laplace transform is useful, especially, uh, you will see that, you will see that in the next couple of sections, okay? Why is it so useful? I mean, for this, I mean, you solve it directly as a first order linear differential equation. You think integration factor may be easier, but this is for illustration purpose. 
Any questions so far? I'm going to do another example. Is it okay? How's the quality now? It's good. Stellar. Okay. okay. It's like being in class again. Oh, I see. <laughs> so it's good? Okay. Is it a lot harder to learn with this remote thing? Yes. A little bit at first. Yes. Yeah, it's yes. less easy to stay motivated. Started taking pictures of my computer, which generally comes out worse quality than a whiteboard, but yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay. We, 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 you're good. Okay, second order, okay? So we have this picture. S Y S minus what? minus y zero, which is one, okay? And then we need to second derivative. <coughs> second derivative. So you multiply this whole thing, you multiply this whole chunk by s, And then subtract, subtract the function you value as zero here. Can you see that it's subtracting? So this guy here, this one here is y zero. Here I need to subtract five. This guy is y prime zero. Okay, I just want you to make sure that you understand this. Do you know why we have a one and a five here? Initial conditions. That's the initial condition. So basically it's saying that taking the derivative here is the same as multiplying by S, subtract the value of the function over here in this diagonal, you go through here, okay? So now you multiply this by S, subtract the value of this guy at T equal to zero, okay? So that is Y prime zero, which is five. Is it okay? So this, on the other side here, Y double prime is what? Y double prime become minus three times Y prime.
Is it correct? Is it okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now you have to multiply all this stuff out. Y square, S square, Y S minus S minus five, minus three S, Y S plus three, two Y S equal to this. Uh, all this Y S stuff, <laughs> S square. All right. And this one you can factorize. Are we still okay? I'll oh, wait. It's a lot of calculation, right? Now, there are two ways to do it from here. Two ways to proceed. One way is to do partial fraction on this one, and then partial fraction on that one, and after that, combine them. The other way is to combine these two first, and then do just one partial fraction. And that's what we're going to do. Are we okay? So it's a lot of work. You have to do the partial fraction on this one. Luckily, we did that earlier. This is exactly the example we did earlier. So we end up with is one equal to minus 16 over five, plus minus one, plus 25 over six, plus minus two, plus one over 30, plus four. Uh, we did this exactly earlier. <coughs> So what is the answer? Minus 16 over five, e to the power t plus 25 over six e to the power two t 
plus 1 over 30 into the power minus 40. Is it all right? How are we doing? Feeling pretty okay, which is nice. Okay. Good. Do you guys have any questions? It seems like a lot of work to solve this, but then there are other problems that we are going to see later. <laughs> That this method is going to be much better. And also, this also gives us some way of getting some more insight into some of these problems, which I, we will try to talk about later. Do you understand the methodology? Yeah. Do you guys need more examples or are we okay? I'm essentially done with this section. Uh, are you guys okay with this partial fraction stuff? Do you know how to do partial fractions? Maybe I, can, I have about 10 minutes. I'm going to just give you a review of partial fractions. Is it okay? Would it be good use of time? Or you want to, you prefer to? Sure, that's fine. I'm going to erase the whole thing. Uh, so if I have I'm going to just review the form, okay? And once you get the form, you can determine the, those, co those constants without too much difficulty. You guys remember this? Yes? Yeah. I'm going to write some more. And you guys tell me, okay? If 
How should it look like the form? Anybody remember this stuff? This is a square here. X minus one occur two times in the denominator. AX squared plus BX plus C, maybe? Oh, never mind. No, definitely not. Uh, the next one is this. Is it coming back to you? Because of this is a double root, you have S minus one and then S minus one squared. Is it coming back to some of you? Yeah. And if I have uh, What do I do? Because the degree at the top is the same as the degree at the bottom, you actually have to do a long division first. For this example, if you do a long division, then you will end up with, so this guy you write it as four plus something. This is the remainder. And that one is a potion. And then you do partial fraction on this one. And then you do partial fraction on that one. You guys know what I'm trying to get at? Sometimes you need to do a long division. If the denominator has degree too big, okay, you want to reduce it so that this guy's degree is less than the degree at the bottom. And sometimes you have things like Let's say 2s squared plus 3s plus 1 divided by s squared plus 9, s minus 1. Now, in this case, this one, you cannot factorize this guy. You cannot factorize this guy. Because you cannot factorize this guy, you will have a quadratic and a linear one. Yeah, okay. I think I really cover all the cases. Okay. I think I really cover all the cases. Uh, with the exception of something like this. Now this guy here, this guy here, you cannot, this guy here, you cannot factorize it. So in the actual case, you can actually do a completing square. Okay. Do a completing square. Um, I don't know how important this one is. Probably not as important as the other ones, but it may appear in a later section. Okay. So that's the overview of the partial fraction stuff. Hopefully, it is helpful. Any other questions?
Uh, that's all I have for today. Do you guys have any other question? Not here. I think we're okay. Thank you for doing the review of partial fractions. That was helpful to see all of the cases again. Okay. All right. So that if nothing else, uh, we're going to just stop here then. Okay. I'll see you on Thursday. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Stay safe. Okay. Bye.